Hello innovators and welcome to another episode of the Inside Land Show, where I connect the dots of innovation and entrepreneurship with my guests. Today's guest is Chief Sales Relationship Officer at Leaders Press. And the mission of Leaders Press is to help 1,000 entrepreneurs share their wisdom with the world by 2030. Andrew is as well author of the book Don't Buy the Watch. We talk deeply about the process of publishing a book for business, why you should do it to support your business and yourself as a leader, and how the whole thing works with the service of the Leaders Press. I can tell you, I'm sold and you might be too if you listen to this conversation. Please welcome to the show, Andrew Dupi. Hello, Andrew. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Hi, yes. I'm doing fantastically this morning. How are you? I'm super good as well. Looking forward to learn how to write a book <laughs> from you today. So for, for everyone listening or watching this, slightly different format than usual because we have a special guest today. Andrew is um, an interesting person as a personality, but as well working with a very interesting business where we go deeper into today. But before we do this, Andrew, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you and how did you get to where you are today? Oh, uh, yeah. I am the Chief Relationship Officer of Leaders Press, uh, formerly Chief Sales Officer, uh, directly interfacing with clients uh, previously, now directly interfacing with businesses. Um, we're a hybrid publisher and we have been in the business for about five years. We're not the first hybrid publisher, but I like to think we're the best. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I, I got here through a very interesting path of, uh, coming from a background in both sales and education and have been in this business since it was a startup. And we've grown this business from, uh, two or three books a year and about, I would say about uh, 50,000 a year to being a uh, seven figure plus business in a very short time and one of the top uh, hybrid publishers in the country. Awesome. And then, of course, you're not just working in a hybrid publisher, you are an author as well. Tell us a little bit about that. Absolutely. And we really love this because uh, we're, uh, I am the uh, author of Don't Buy the Watch, which just came out. Uh, about a week ago, <laughs> and nice. it, is, it, is, it is a, a guide to the being in the mindset of looking at sales from the position of building partnerships hmm. over just selling a single product. Hence the title, don't buy the watch, buy something that actually ends up giving you a back end, giving you something that you can end up turning into an investment rather than something that devalues the minutes that you get it. Um, and we, we did that book uh, essentially so that somebody like me that has absolutely no idea how to write <laughs> can, can be, can be published just to show our potential authors that come to us uh, that we put our money where our mouth is and can absolutely do this not only for others, but for ourselves. Yeah. I, I like that because that's not, usual that people who are working in a business using their product in the same way so it's 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 a good good example at least from from my perspective that you has used your services and and used it for yourself and of yep. course that's then ending up in a book which is exciting <laughs> so it's, yep. if anyone is interested in the book we put the link to the book don't buy the watch as well into the show notes so people can find it so that two or three of the listeners or a couple of more um, who are interested it's, in sales. It's very short. You can read it. It's fine. Go in there and grab it. <laughs> yes. So what we agreed is we do, do we do a story format today or we, we set up with the story. And what we have thought about is um, starting the story with who, who, who is the entrepreneur who should be writing a book. And then the easiest was, what we have agreed on is like, hey, let's take myself. I have never published a book. I'm crap in writing and I would love to publish a book. So wh why not starting with myself? So for everyone who don't know me, a um, little bit background from the story perspective. So I've been coming from a large corporate background, was in a global position, being the head of innovation for one of the biggest companies in the world, working in retail. Um, and stepped out of that world a couple of years back and built my own business. And I would call myself today, I'm one of the thought leaders in the human innovation space of the world. And 
of course, the podcast is one of my instruments in putting myself out. But I always thought about, hey, how could I publish a book? Why not writing a book? I really would love to do something because I like I like reading myself as well and or listening to an audiobook. So that's kind of the story. And for me, it's really starting you as the expert. Why should I write a book as a business owner? Uh, that's actually a fantastic question. And that's a question that I get asked every single day. <laughs> and the reason that you should write a book as a business owner and it, it is that it establishes you as an authority and it mm -hmm. gives you something that basically just replaces your business card. And both of those things become so important, especially if you are in any kind of a customer facing business, uh, customer facing business, because establishing yourself as authority, you're giving yourself your unique identity. You're saying first, I'm going to tell you in 200 pages, you don't want to go beyond that, of why you should come to me and look at me and what, why you should just get to know me. Hmm. And that is so important to define yourself because we're in a world where you have thousands of businesses, millions of businesses that in many cases, a lot of people are stepping on their own toes. You want somebody to get to know who you are. And it's so very important to do that. And the replacing of the business card, that's one of our authors, Chris Katranis actually said that to us. And I know others have, but we love Chris. So we, uh, in his book, Disruptive Leadership, he even mentioned a little bit. And uh, he was one of our first authors. And we stole it and ran with it. And he loves that we do. <laughs> but yeah, he, he basically said to us, and it, it was just, it, it so resonated that you know, he works in telecommunications. He goes into boardrooms in uh, the Middle East. He, he works in, in Dubai, uh, uh, Lebanon, uh, Syria, other countries. He, he says, if I go into a boardroom and I leave my business card, they've got a phone number. If I go into a boardroom and I leave my book, they have my phone number and they have everything they need to know about why they should work with me. Hmm. And there's such a big difference in those two things and it's been such a uh, a key that has unlocked so much business for chris and others that we've worked with uh yeah. that yeah it just it just resonated with us and we we've stuck with that for a very long time i like that and, and is it true that you you are specialized on people who are writing business books yes and helping entrepreneurs primarily and yeah. that, that, is, that is our primary business. We do uh, allow and, and we have had, uh, as Leaders Press, we do like leadership. So mm -hmm. we have had many books that have been with someone that just wants to write something that either tells their story or changes the world. Uh, I, I say change the world. That's Morris David Esco's book. Uh, I, I'm shilling from our, for our authors, but they, 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 they're great books. Um, tell it, or, or telling a story, uh, Po Chung, he's one of the co-founders of DHL International. Everybody knows Larry Hillbaum. They don't know Po Chung. They don't know what he did in Southeast Asia, the time he spent in Chinese prison, the things that he did to build DHL in the Southeast Asia. Huh. And uh, Mr. Chung, uh, I'm never going to call him Po while I just did there, uh, <laughs> but Mr. Chung built that business and wanted to tell his story and leave it with somebody. So we do that too. And there is something in that uh, for somebody that just wants to leave something behind. I mean, one of the books by me, Two Blue, Dennis Andrews does that. So um, there is something for a legacy, but primarily, yes, we do actually just do something that's, that's connected to your business. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I have done a lot of research in the past because I always was thinking, should I write a book? Am I ready for a book? Um, really trying to understand. And what I have found out for myself, everyone who is successful on a global scale, um, the people we know, they have written a book. There yes. is almost no way around if you want to get closer to that direction in not having a book. Maybe you stand out in 20 years without having a book if you manage. But it's, it doesn't matter who, everyone has written a book. It's quite interesting to see that. Yeah, I, I completely agree. It's going to, everybody's going to do it at one point or another that is, that is a business leader that wants to break out of their niche. 
Hmm. And it, it doesn't matter how small you ha- you are. It doesn't matter how big you are. Everybody's going to get there. I mean, I, I remember my dad had Lee Iacocca's book. Uh, as a salesperson, he was he loved that sitting on uh, you know, his bookshelf. And you know, now as a publisher, I, I look at that and I'm like, Lee Iacocca didn't write a word of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he had to have that thing. It was something that he had to had to uh, put, put together. So everybody's going to get one at one point. Or another. Yeah. And it's also most of the people who are very, very, very extremely successful, they have even more books. So it's not it doesn't stay with one book because kind of they got the buck and saying, hey, this works, I guess. At least. <laughs> yeah. And then they're saying, OK, how, how I can how can I level up? How can I take it to the next level? How can I express myself in a specific way that it's attracting other people and so on and so on? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, having more than one book is better than even having just one. And many authors who have made money off of the initial book or just been able to build their brand off of that initial book realize that. Um, that that goes for small and large business leaders. Many of our authors come back to us and just do more books. Yeah. Uh, because once they find out that first book was so successful, people want to know other things about them. So it, it begins to kind of be a rolling ball of, you know, let me tell you more. And every book just doesn't tells you more, but just enough to still give you that hook to come in and still talk to you because they want to, it's, it's opening the door. It's putting your foot in the door. It, it's, it's breaking the ice yeah. with anyone that wants to talk to you. Yeah. Because I'm doing the podcast, I've interviewed quite some publishers or people who have uh, authors, not publishers, mm-hmm. authors. Um, what what most of them told me, it's it's not about earning money with the book sales itself. It's more about the credibility, like you said, establishing yourself as an authority that then, depending on what business you have, that brings the money in. It's not the book sales. Is that the same uh, yes. of your thinking or how do you think about it? Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually tell everybody that comes in the door, one of the things that I do, uh, I, I'm, I'm a good salesman, but I'm very honest. <laughs> that's <laughs> maybe anybody, why you are a good one. <laughs> that's probably why I'm a good salesman. But everybody that comes in the door with me and they say, well, you know, I, 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 what, what about royalties? I'm like, listen, you're not going to make money on royalties. Just, just don't even go there. Yeah. Uh, if you want to make money on royalties, write a romance novel, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> that is where you make money on royalties. Uh, bi- bi- building a nonfiction book in the United States or, or anywhere really in, in 2022 is about building a book that is going to be a key to get to you. Yeah. And that's why you want it. Uh, I have, I speak in the people, spoken to people, uh, very recently, even that have told me that, uh, you know, they've made five, 10, 20 million dollars off of a single book. And that's not even counting the royalty sales because they don't even care. Yeah. yeah. And, and that that's really what you want to do. And we help you with that um, at Leaders Press. We help you find those avenues in which you can monetize without worrying about or even thinking about the concept of sales. Royalties, I call royalties gravy because yeah. that's what they are. So if we haven't triggered any one of the listeners yet to un- <laughs> to to willing to know why I, I don't know. <laughs> so let's let, let's 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 get oh, willing to know how not why. Let's go let's Absolutely. go start with a high level. So if we, we if we take a 10,000 foot perspective, how does the process work? So starting with my story, I'm I'm an entrepreneur. I have a large large background. I have started to get a following and things are moving slowly. How, how so I'm reaching out to you and say, hey, Andrew, I would love to to figure out how, how I can work together with you guys. How, how would you help me? My first step would be that I would talk you up because you already had a podcast and you already have something that's this connected. And I've actually had authors like that. I'll, I'll throw another name out for one of our authors. Dan King, 360 Size Up, already had a podcast, uh, came to us, said the same thing that you're saying. And when somebody like you would come to me, and say, I really want to kick this off with a book, I would say, perfect. You have an audience. What we need to do now is take this this book, and if you don't want to write it yourself, which the vast majority don't, because that's an eight-hour-a-day job (laughs) to to, to write it, 
Uh, um, you're you're going to come to us, and what we're going to do is we're going to be your staff. We're mm-hmm. we're like self publishing, except we are a publisher. We have distribution, uh, worldwide distribution with Simon and Schuster. So we we've connected with them to, to be our distributor. They're not our publisher. We're just partners. So people will see that and say, okay, you've got distribution. You got this. What else can you do for me? And what else we can do for you is basically everything, making that actual process of making the book easy. So we're going to actually give you a project manager. And that project manager is going to to talk to you and begin to strategize with you how to market your book. That's so lost on on many people that go to self-publishing route. You know, they say it's this. I, I, I use this. They sell six copies to their friends. <laughs> I, I, that, that's not something I pull out of my head. That's literally something that one of our early authors told me uh, that, that that's that's what he did with his first book. And it, yeah, they, they sell six copies to their friends. What they need is somebody to help them. That is a publisher that can look at the market, can take their book, compare it to others that are like them can dig through the the book as we're writing it for you because mm-hmm. that's the thing it's about 15 weeks we do, we're doing interviews in which we are taking your interviews and turning them into a manuscript and begin to look at keywords where can we fit this how many of these can we can we do and, and that's how we do the Amazon bestseller guarantee and I know many of your listeners might hear oh it's easy to get on Amazon it is and other 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 high publisher could tell you, oh no, it's hard. No, it's easy. But what isn't easy is to keep you there. Yeah. And yeah. we do that. <laughs> <laughs> Ask Saihuda that was number one in network security for two years. And but we are able to and it's so important, regardless of whether or not it's easy, it's so important to have someone that knows what they're doing to get you there because that's the difference between you being buried like four or five hundred down on a list and just having your name as a little tiny thing, hmm. you know, my book by Ian's Hetland, or having it up at the top, which yeah. is the actual cover of your book that somebody's going to click on and buy. Or even if they don't buy, they're just going to read the front blurbs and, 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 and see what's in there and maybe even give you a call off of just that. Um, so that's the process that we have in the beginning that we're talking to you. We're doing interviews, we're writing the book, and while we're writing the book, we're doing the heavy lifting. We're doing the things like getting things that people don't know how to do, like the cover. We're getting uh, it formatted for uh, release on on multiple different platforms. We're converting it to EPUB. We're converting it uh, for the Apple uh, format to to be released with that. Uh, We're getting the paperback done, and we're formatting it for uh, paperback, hardback if you want it. I don't recommend it, but people do like it Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes. Uh, we're doing libraries, we're doing foreign rights sales, we're doing all the things that people don't know how to do when they do self-publishing. Because the self-publishing, they go on, they publish their book, it's on print on demand, and they have a cover that's done by their cousin Eddie. <laughs> and, they, and they get it out there. But with us, you're going to end up spending almost the same amount of money to work with us. That you do once if you're going to do self-publishing right, except you're going to have professionals that are walking you through the process from beginning to end, getting you bookstore distribution, getting you printers that aren't print on demand, the real printers, shared and LSC communications. Anyone that's ever worked in in writing knows those names, hmm. especially hmm. a shared. And so we're, they're getting high quality printing. They're getting uh, high quality distribution, and yeah, they're, they're, they're also getting support, and we're working with a lot of affiliates uh, that, that we're connected with uh, that also are then, after we're done with you, we can start getting you public speaking gigs. Yeah. We can start, we can connect you with the people you need to find that you wouldn't have found other ways through our affiliates uh, that uh, will 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 be unlock you to the next level. And the important thing about this is, and it's just something I hear so often. I heard this, I heard this from uh, anybody, your listeners that they'll know these names. These are big time coaches that I've worked with coaching me, <laughs> yeah. and they'll love me calling them out. Uh, Dan Cashel and Alex Mendoza. 
And mm-hmm. both of them, one of their biggest regrets at the beginning of their job of, of their business, of their coaching business, was they didn't have a book initially. And they spent tens of thousands of dollars to get their early books out. And and, and that's in and more than us, actually. I mean, we're we're our pri- far beyond our price range to get their books out. And they all both of them said they wish they'd had it earlier. And that that resonates with me, and that resonates, I think, with a lot of our authors. That that uh, I've heard that many times. <laughs> yeah. So it's basically, if I understand you right, it's it's a one stop shop, like yep. a service where I say, I would love to write a book. I have no idea about the book, and I connect with you and your colleagues, and you take care of the, like you basically take me on the hand and help me to get it done. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's it, when my when my dad was. Uh, doing uh installations for uh convenience store pizza and 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 sub shops he called it turnkey and that is actually <laughs> a, in a lot of them live yeah, it's turnkey you turn the key you're done you don't have yeah. to do anything else everybody else takes it from there you know you t- t- today you don't have your sub shop tomorrow you've got it it's working it's running and it's making you money yeah. and that is absolutely what we do it's turnkey we, if you want a book you come to us, you turn the key, you got it. Yeah, let's let's dive a little deeper. So getting started that you mentioned already. So it's, of course, talking to you and then talking to, <laughs> to yeah. your colleagues. Myself or John Nicholson, absolutely. Yeah, we're, we're both, we both uh, are the first guys you're going to talk to in this. Yep. Yeah. Then you get a project manager and then the whole thing gets started. So let I've seen that you have diff, different ways of engagement. So let's say they're they're two main main differences i have seen maybe you can explain them Mm -hmm. a little bit one one was like i'm writing myself and the other one was you're taking care of writing for me what is what is the difference from from a service perspective exactly what you're saying there uh when you're writing it yourself uh and we do have authors that are doing that uh and many successful authors i mentioned sai huda uh i meant uh magnus pinker I'm sure that some of your people have heard of Magnus. Magnus is absolutely amazing. Um, they come to us with manuscripts, and they, they have already done the writing themselves. Uh, really, the, the only difference is whether or not they've written it themselves or not. When they've written it themselves, uh, the there's a little bit of a different step because we have to vet it. We are not a vanity press, and that is extremely important to understand. The, the, the term vanity press is if I pay my money, I, you're going to publish my book, even if it's word salad. Yeah. And we are not that. We have to vet everything that we have. Uh, we, we read it. And if it is in a position, and 95%, I almost said 90, 95% of the time, it's in a position in which we can work with it. Uh, when someone comes to us and, and presents that, then we skip the writing phase. Mm-hmm. All of the connection back and forth writing is done. We go straight to editing. And that's another big thing that we provide. Uh, every book must be edited. Mm-hmm. The book becomes better in the editing process every single time. And uh, so when you come to us, that's where you begin is you go into that editing phase to begin to revise the book, the manuscript that you have. And that's really the only difference. <coughs> Excuse me. The, when you're coming to us without that, we have to begin with, let's start a mind map. Mm-hmm. Let's actually start to know what you want. What's the end result that you're looking for? what kind of book do you want is it a legacy is it is it a lead generator is it a memoir Mm -hmm. and when we're doing that do we begin with a mind map and then begin structuring that into an outline so we have to break that down mind map outline then start to formulate questions that we're sending you back and forth and then we start in the writing phase and it's yeah the the difference is is it going to take you 10 months or is it going to take you four okay if you have the manuscript it's going to be four but it's basically the engagement is just for you still need to write most probably 10 months a book, the manuscript. Yeah. So it, it, or, 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 yeah. It, it, or more. We, we have done authors that have not finished their manuscript. I just signed one yesterday <laughs> um, that have not. And at that point we have to establish deadlines. 
just like yeah. a traditional publisher. Yeah. You need to have X, Y, Z done at this, this, and this date so that we can hit your release window that you want. Yeah. Uh, if you miss that, we we can't do it. I mean, it's just how how it, how it works. Uh, so if, if you think about the traditional publishing, where you go to somebody and they give you an advance and they say, have the book done by X date, yeah. When someone comes to us with a manuscript that's not finished, we tell them, yes, you have to do the same thing. Uh, most come to us with a finished book, mm-hmm. with a book that is actually already done and they're shopping it around because they've already thought about, should I self-publish this? Should I submit this to a traditional publisher or should I look at the hybrid publisher? Yeah, And that's, yeah, so that in many times they, they choose the hybrid because it is a quicker, better process for them uh, than, than necessarily going with the other two options. Yeah. Speaking about time, how much time would I need to allocate in both cases? Uh, with If you're writing your own book, if it's done, very little. You're only going to be working in the editing process. The editing mm-hmm. process is where you're actually going to be getting revisions from the editor and you you need to look at them and make sure that they're what you want that everything is, that you're the author's voice is not lost uh that's an important concept of editing anybody's worked in editing knows what that means uh author's voice is an editor needs to edit they don't need to rewrite <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so so when you're doing that process it, it's that so you're you don't do a lot if you've written the actual book most of your time investment is going to be talking to us about marketing Yep. which everybody loves to do that part. They, they talk about themselves or ever, they're self-advertising. <laughs> um, now, with if you don't have it finished, your time investment is that plus about 15 hours. Mm-hmm. And that 15 hours is where you're going to be doing the actual interviews for the book. So and, if that, that means someone on your side, a professional person who is, who is kind of, writing the book or narrating topics is then interviewing the person in, yes. in this case, me and digging deeper. What is the book about? What are the topics? Can you explain this to me? Uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah that That's that. And, and we've had many authors that have wanted to skip that. And once they've started it, they're like, I don't want to skip that anymore. Hmm. Uh, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, show for another one of our authors, Dennis Andrews, two blue saying that was it. He had been working on the book for 10 years before he came to us. Mm-hmm. And he knew everything about his time at IBM and about how uh, the, the PS2 got made. And he had worked on that book. And when he came to us, he's like, all right, I'll do some of these interviews, but I don't really think that that's going to be the case. But I'm, I'm not going to get anything out of it. He started remembering things he'd, he'd forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> In those interviews, he was like, yes, absolutely. I want to do this. This is amazing. And he came out with a book that he'd been trying to write for 10 years. Yeah. And I can't imagine. Get it done. <laughs> because I, by while interviewing people for the podcast, I see and they t- tell me afterwards, I would have never come up with that if you wouldn't have asked me in that specific way. So if yeah. you have someone who is, not in my case, but on your side at least, a professional interviewer who, who knows what they talk about and how to dig deeper, then that they get the nuggets out of the people. That's most probably then, like you say, creating an outcome, which is then the book, which is 10 times better than if you would just do it on yourself without someone poking. You're, you're completely right. It, yeah. it really, it really, it really unlocks a lot. We've had some authors that have done that. They just, they didn't want to go through that. They wanted to write it themselves. Uh, and then once they actually started getting help, they're like, yeah, please rewrite this entire thing from me from scratch <laughs> because you, you found things that I could not find. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- Yeah. So if, if we take my example again, so I've yeah. never written a book. I have no idea how to structure a book. How would this work? So sitting together, of course, talking about with the project manager and the process and understanding mm-hmm. of, about the marketing piece, but the actual writing process, the interview process, how, how can, can we imagine this? Is this like 15 hours nonstop during one week mm-hmm. or is it split mm-hmm. into several months, we, weeks? Yes, we break it into one a week. Uh, we've done two a week occasionally for somebody that just absolutely must have it done, but we do it at one a week for the reason that we want somebody to think. Yeah. We yeah. want those other six days to sit and reflect on what they said, because there's things that start coming to the top. 
Yeah. They, they're like, they, they, they go over the inner, we send the questions as well. So, so the, the process is this, you get the initial questions. You, the interview is about an hour and everybody says it's fun because <laughs> yeah. our project yeah. managers are fun. We, we, we have, we have a fun question <laughs> when, when, when we're hiring for that. And so you have that, you have that week to think about it. You have the hour that you're, you, you've read the questions, you come in and you can blow the questions away. You can just like, listen, let's not go to the questions because I want to go this way. And what our professionals do on our end, our project managers do is that they take this and they're like, all right, these questions didn't go here, but I'm going to choose my own adventure with the others. Yeah. What other questions can I start asking off of these? Where can we start leading this so that we're going to get to the end that our author wants? Yeah. And yeah, so that's why we do it one week because they take that week to think about it. They get another set of questions and they've got several days to start thinking about that. And in their minds, they're, they're already answering those questions on day one of six that's going up to that. And, and yeah. then beginning yeah. to formulate more and more and more <laughs> out. So that's why we do it one a week. We're not going to just blow it through in, in just one. And we're not going to just stitch those manuscripts together that come off of that, too. Yeah. You know, our, our writers don't have direct connections to our, to our authors. And some, have had some others that are competitors do that. They actually connect the writers directly. We find that the best is to keep a little bit of separation until the very, very, very end. Mm. Because we we tell them right up, it's like, you want the writer to be separate from you because the writer's doing their job right now. Mm. And they're in their own headspace. And they don't need to be thrown in one other direction. If there's something in there that you don't, that, that's not quite correct and connected, that's what the editing process is for. Yeah. 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 So, so let them, right. I, I, I tell this story a lot. I met Pat Roffles once, uh, who was the writer of the name of the wind. And he said about the writing process, but he sat there you know, he, he, he's a best-selling author. Some of you might've heard of him. He's, he's got a movie being done. He, yeah. he sat there and he just wrote and he wrote and he wrote and he wrote. And one day he kept going back and deleting and rewriting and rewriting. And one day he just said, you know what? I'm going to stop this right now because I'm only about a third of my way through my book. And I just, I'm going to put in my head, no one's ever going to like this. No one's ever going to read it. I don't care anymore. I'm just going to finish it. And he did. And then he edited it and then it became yeah. <laughs> So that's what the process, that's why that's important. Yeah. yeah. From, from a format perspective, um, how much is it the, the author's choice on hey this should be more in a storytelling format this should be more in a business style e explainerity like explainer way style it, it, do you have a magic formula on that which you say if we use this way this will be more successful in the genre in the topic you're doing or how does mm -hmm. that work we do some guidance on that um mm -hmm. we will tell it, it it depends on how important to them it is to be completely in their voice or completely fitting in the genre. Yeah. Uh, we have had authors, Kristen Cripps is an example, and she would love this. She did not care. <laughs> She's like, I want to put LOLs and F-bombs in everything that I talk like yeah. in my book. That was just her. And she did, and it really, and it really worked. Uh, but we've had other authors that have come to us that have said, you know, let's make sure that this fits. Hmm. You know, hmm. whatever, it doesn't, it, it, if it's storytelling, that works. And we do actually recommend some storytelling. We will always recommend, we, we recommend a format of storytelling and then hooks. Yeah. If you're doing yeah. a lead generator. Because first of all, people want to know who you are and why they should be interested in you. And then you want to build in hooks. Uh, it's, it's like a three act play and you're going to start with your story and then you're going to put in the tease for the call to action. You're going to put in why you are actually important to listen to. And then in the end, you're going to have a conclusion that has your hook and your call to action hmm. that you put in there. So many just go with that format. They say, I really want that because I want to have someone that is going to 
know me and then go forward with me. Um, so there is a secret sauce to it that for, for someone that just directly wants a lead generator book. What I like about this, because that's, for me, that's almost the science behind it. If, if, mm -hmm. if I would write a book, I, I might be able to write, let's say, like you said, 200 pages. And I will ask more about that as well later. Mm -hmm. I might be able to write something. It will not be properly, but it's for sure not from a systematic algorithm, let's say, perspective working with, like, like we said, as a lead generator, you need to have specific points. You need to press specific, specific buttons that work with the person who is reading or listening to it afterwards. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, you, you do want to do that. Uh, you want to have your listeners interested. Uh, w there's a metric, I think, that they put up once Kindles came out. They began to actually see how much of a book people would read. Yeah. And it ends up being something around 25%. So I know, yeah, and, and before they, and that's nonfiction. I mean, fiction is different because fiction, yeah. I mean, you can have a page turner, somebody's going to go right through it. But that's, that's nonfiction. So, so around 25% is what people actually read. So th there is a science and a math to it. It's like we need to get a lot of stuff in that first 25%, even yeah. if there's stuff later on. I mean, we actually put it to where there's stuff in the first like two or 3%. Uh, even even that shows on just your Amazon preview, we have had people get business off of the preview. Yeah, I can't because, imagine. Yeah, because because we 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 put initially links, QR codes, things to social media. In your case, I would one hundred percent in the first three pages put a link to your podcast. Yeah, makes and, sense. And yeah, with a QR code, I, I would do a QR code. You scan it and. And it actually brings up and everything is, is loaded in uh, for your podcast. We did that with Steve Ferreira, uh, yeah. uh, Navigating B2B. And yeah. that's because there will be people that might read that. And it's like, I don't really care to go through 200 pages of a book. And they're going to take their phone. They're going to scan that QR code. And then you're going to get a phone call. Can I be on your podcast? Yeah. Can I can I get Ocean Audit to, 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 to work with me on, on, on shipping freight? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, there you go. Love it. So first chapters, then pages. Mm -hmm. How do how, how do you define chapters, the amount of chapters? Is there something magic about it or is it just happening as part of the process? 100% part of the process. Thoroughly, thoroughly up to the author. Um, it's preferable to have chapters, as few chapters as possible because you want to actually have things broken down into bite-sized chunks for the reader. Yeah. So that they can say, Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Uh, like let's say it's a book on, on cybersecurity. Uh, I want to read about cloud because that's what I do. Yeah. And yeah. what do I do about, about cloud protection? So they see chapter six is cloud. So they're just going to go out to that and do it. Um, so the, the fewer it is better, but that's really completely dependent on who's who's writing. Uh, it, that comes out of the outline. Yeah. 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 Pages. You mentioned it should not, if I understood you right, not above two hundred pages. One hundred percent. What's the yeah. reason for that? Uh, people won't read them. It's real <laughs> simple. Yeah, it's real simple. Uh, when you're talking about a nonfiction book, you want to have it in a sweet spot of about 50,000 words, mm. which ends up being 200 pages. In fact, our packages that we do all work off of 50,000 words. Uh, there, it, it, if someone sees, and even that's even with our distributor, I, mean, I don't want to talk for Simon & Schuster, but I know that, uh, I know 100% that they have a harder time putting books in the bookstores that are nonfiction that are over that. Yeah. And if I if I bring them a book that's three hundred thousand words, they're gonna say no, huh. because they're not them is like I, I can't I can't send my people out to sell this and I can't do a buyer for books a million, and and that buyer is gonna look at that and say three hundred thousand words. Well, no, thank huh. you, um, because it, it's just attention span is so short that. Uh, and it's that 25% thing. 
Yeah, twenty five percent of two hundred is 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 decent. Twenty five percent of eight hundred and fifty is done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's in interesting because these are topics I've never thought about. And then consuming a lot of books, I I will check that later. How, how much pages they have, the good ones. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> title. How how do you come up with the title? How do you support? Because I guess there's again an algorithm thinking system thinking behind it. If you want to rank rank it, it need to be not hey I'm writing a book about innovation. In my case, it need to be something a little bit more catchy that that will work mm -hmm. in in a marketing sense as well. How does that work? A lot of it ends up with uh, SEO. It is compare that's part of our strategy session is comparing it to other titles that are similar to yours and seeing what they call themselves. Uh, then finding keywords, catch words, what do what brings people to the book and what interests them. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, uh, we have two books that are next level. We have next level cybersecurity and next level selling. Uh, those are both books by authors that basically came to us and said, I don't really have a concern about the title. I, I just want you to have something that brings me to, that brings authors or brings readers to the book. Mm -hmm. And that was just done really off of just searching keywords. What keywords do people like? And it sounds simple, but the yeah. idea is that when someone is looking to upgrade their selling and they see next level selling, they do it. Uh, Magnus's book, Play Bold. That was, again, a little bit of SEO. He didn't really have a book, a, a title. He wrote the book. He didn't really have a title. So hmm. it was all just coming up. When you say play bold, would you want to read that? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, it went, and, 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 a little, and the subtitles are important. It's like the innovations, like you, you, how, how next level innovation, pivoting your company. And yeah. you see play bold. Fortune favors the bold. You think Alexander the Great. You think bold. Yeah. And, yeah. and that came out in 2020 when people were pivoting. Yeah, I, I want to do that. Uh, Kevin Jackson, same thing. Click to transform. Digital mm -hmm. transformation book. So yeah. you're sitting there. That's like if, if anyone that's in digital transformation, they, they think that 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 just that just clicked to transform. Yeah. <laughs> so the title is really important. Some people don't care though. Some people, and some people have a title that is in mind uh, very much. And when we do that, we actually work to make sure that that title can work. And if it doesn't, we'll fidget it, whether it be in the main title or a subtitle. Yeah. And is it then, if we talk about the SEO component, is it as well part of the first 25% that needs to work with an SEO component? Because Absolutely. everything is basically indexed this times. Absolutely. Huh. Because what you want to do that, that title, I, I love, I think our best titles are the ones that interest people. And they like, I am curious to know what hmm. that means. Yeah. And, and they, and they click on that and they do, and they say, uh, Kristen Cripps, who I mentioned her before. Yeah. One of them, she for nerd. I know a lot of female entrepreneurs that have just clicked on that because they're like, oh, yeah, what does sheepreneur sure. mean? Yeah. And, 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 and they go through that. So at the previews and they want to see the back, back blurb and you want them to buy it. Yeah. Interesting because for, for me, it's, now that you say it's, it's obvious, but mm -hmm. if you self-publish your book and have never done it, you would never think about that. They I don't. They don't. Least. They don't, and 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 that's and I'm I'm saying that too. I know that there may be some in your audience that's like, well, I'm I'm thinking about self self publishing. I'll I'll be fine. I would say twenty to thirty percent of our authors have self published before, hmm. and they didn't think of that. They didn't like their titles. They didn't like how it came out. Everything ended up just not quite working the way that they wanted to, um, and that's because they didn't have help. I mean, I, I'm doing a webinar right now. I'm sorry, a summit uh, in which I'm talking to successful authors and almost all of them have said that their biggest regret was in the beginning. They didn't get help. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine that. Yeah. So if, if we talk about the design, mm. um, is there something specific about as well from a, what works better than other things? Most probably at least what I've heard in website design is 
if you if you cater it more for a female audience, you need to have different colors, for example, than mm -hmm. if you cater for a male audience. How do you use these things, or or maybe not at all? We we do sometimes. We have a creative designer that is in house with us, and he is superb at at understanding how those work. We do have a basic uh, look for our books that is us that essentially helps our brand because we have to think about ourselves as well you know, yeah. a leader's press book you're able to tell i mean you see a few of them behind me yeah. um they do have a basic look to them when, when you see them uh but they're also they're also little things that are just about you know put put a keyword in a different color from others like next level and then red selling yeah because you yeah. want it, you want the eye to go to one specific thing. Um, so there are little uh, algorithms and and uh, art hacks that we use to get to there. But we also have to uh, consider our authors. And there are times that our authors are going to us, and it's like I particularly want something to look like this, hmm. and we 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 want to cater to them. My book. No, why, don't buy the watch. I already had an idea in my mind about what the cover of that book was going to be. I knew I wanted it to look like a Leaders Press book because it was going to be one. So, I mean, as an executive in the company, you know, like I, I know what our books look like. Makes so I told, I told our designer, Dolshan, so first of all, make it look like one of ours. <laughs> but then I told him, it's like, but I want a watch motif in the bottom, some kind of, of thing, because I want to have with a with watch in a different color, so that there's like that like that thing is and i want to draw it to that and then i want them to look at the other part and think this is an interesting title what the heck does that mean so that's why i picked, picked a vague title yeah. to, to bring you along and yeah. then I, I wanted to watch motif and and, and at that point you know our, our creative designer dalshan worked with it and came up with a fantastic he, he pulled it out of my brain yeah. of what i wanted i didn't even know what i wanted until i put it on there and i'm like that's that you got it <laughs> that, that's a, yeah. that's again the service which same with the writing if you have someone who is professional they ask you a couple of questions they come up with something that's what you thought but that the next level of basically of what you thought exactly exactly right. and and you know that's that's what you get i mean when you're doing self-publishing you can grab some uh non-copyrighted art and sling it on the page but does that really draw a reader's attention somebody will see that and they can see oh that looks like a self-published book <laughs> i'm not interested in that yeah and they'll go to something else publishing how does the publishing work so <laughs> super simple Pr press the publishing button <laughs> how, how how do I understand that as someone? Let imagine we we now went through all the process. We have an understanding of what's the marketing channel, mm -hmm. how we promote this going forward. Speaking, podcasting, most probably are parts of that. We have we have a plan. How does the publishing itself work? The great news is that for the author, it is press the publishing button, <laughs> and it does it. On our end, it's it's more difficult. I um, mean, our our on our end, it is getting uh, submitting your Library of Congress uh, number and your in your ISBN. So you got your control number, you got your ISBN. We're getting your rights that are yours with us. Uh, that's different from traditional publishing, so that we're setting it up that you have complete rights to your book. Mm -hmm. So it's like self publishing in that uh, mm -hmm. where where you we have of that. Um, Publishing is really about getting the printing and distribution done. And so, you know, we, we pop our name on there. All of that's done. We get our distributor's name on there, which is Simon & Schuster. You got your Library Congress control number. You got your ISBN. Uh, you, you have your rights that are assigned to you. So your copyright protection is built in once you got those two LLC and ISBN. And then it's getting it out into stores and getting it onto websites. And that is done uh, directly by us basically do, of making our print orders. We work with our distributor to get the print orders. We work with pre-orders to know how many books are actually going to be in demand. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're working with getting praise. Uh, we ask, who do you know? How can we get praise to get this so that we can already start getting pre-ordered blurbs? 
Uh, it, and and then it's just the physical thing of getting it from point A to point B, to getting it actually into a bookstore and online. Formatting is a big part of that. Uh, formatting is where our people uh, are actually getting your book that is a manuscript and translating it so that it is in EPUB so that somebody can go on to and, and download it onto their Kindle Fire. Uh, when they're buying it through Amazon. Hmm. Uh, a lot of us just working with Amazon too. I mean, we're a publisher, so we work with Amazon. We told them we got a book coming out. We told them that the book is going to be at, at a pre-order uh, price range for a certain amount of time. And uh, they they set everything up. And there's all kinds of things that go wrong. And <laughs> every, every time. I mean, uh, I, I know uh, our, one of our chief of operations, Deborah, is is our back end person that does everything on this. And I know her very well. She's my ex wife. Um, she's a great person, and I, I she, she works on this all the time hmm. about just just putting out the fires that we have that come to us about just just the, the problems that Amazon has, the problems that the, that the printers have, the problems that the that uh, distributor has and the great thing about our office they don't have to deal with any of that yeah because we're handling all of that to make sure that if they want to book out in january for their event where they're going to go do public speaking and they want to hand everything off that they have that book in their hand that day yeah that's a big one yep because it's i mean just with a couple of people i have spoken to over the last year it's huge Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's not, like I said, pr press publishing. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it, it's a whole deal. Yeah, it is. It, 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 it's very, very difficult. But, I mean, from, from our perspective, if you ask what does it look like from a publisher, it's really about just making sure that the printing is done on time, that the online release is formatted and done on time, and that the distribution is clean. And yeah. that's, that's really what we're doing on our end, yeah. As as an international person like I am, does that work internationally straight away, or is it U U.S. first and then the others? How does that work? It with with Simon and Schuster it works internationally straight away in English. Huh. Uh, so we have international. I'm actually working with a, a, a author right now who's about to sign with us. That is one of their things. Is I, I need Singapore. So hmm. that's just just talking to Simon and Schuster, and making sure. Uh, prioritize your buyers in Singapore yeah. and, and they, and they know how to do that. Now, foreign language is a little bit different. So if you, because we're, we're a U.S. company, uh, we're, we're based in Italy, but, but we're international and, and I'm in the U S and most of our business in the U S. Yeah. So when we're doing U.S. publishing, that all is handled with English, but, uh, let's say Po Chung, perfect example. He's in Hong Kong. His book is, about the Southeast Asian branch of DHL. So he needed it in China yeah. and he needed it in India yeah. and he needed Japan. So those were the countries, those are the countries he worked in. Uh, so we do actually have internally a foreign rights agent that mm -hmm. then goes and she works with, uh, uh, in book fairs. It's really kind of simple. It's like, how, how does she do all this? Well, she just goes to book fairs. <laughs> Literally. I mean, I wish I had a more cool sexy answer than that but that's really how it works <laughs> uh yeah she goes and she and, and and she gives out samples and she talks to publishers in other countries so that's licensing when when that happens like let's say you get your book published in in china like uh mr chunk uh you're gonna have a publisher in china that's gonna look at it it's gonna say well that's extremely relevant to our market that's interesting i want to buy it And I'm going to do all the work on my end. So on our end, we're getting the licensing handled. They're doing the printing. They're doing the distribution. They're doing all that on our end. On Mr. Chung's end, he's getting a check in the mail. Yeah. Anybody that works in, in movies will know that, how that works, where, you know, your, your, your movie gets licensed in a, in a foreign country. You, know, you, you as a producer, if you're on it, you just get your check. Yeah. So that means they translate it then to Chinese and yeah, do they do everything. all the work. Yeah, they do all the work. They're doing a licensing agreement. 
Yeah. So okay. he, yeah, they they're they're getting they're getting a share of the rights for a certain amount of time that we sell them, and our authors aren't having to do it on themselves. They don't have to do any work. That all they have to do is wait for that money to hit their mailbox. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> so last last question on 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 the book process. I'm a huge fan of audiobooks. And yes. because I don't have enough time to read, I mean, I have literally enough time, but I can't prioritize it because my daughter is running around and I, I'm just <laughs> now 100% into audiobooks. That's the way how I can manage at least one one book, if not one and a half a week. Do you support that as well? We do at a certain price point. We have a We have a package that has that. Uh, one of our primary premier packages not only does audiobook, but also guarantees bestseller in U.S. Editor and Wall Street Journal. Mm. Uh, and that's because we're throwing money at the problem. Mm. And uh, we don't do that on a lot of our smaller uh, packages because audiobooks require a lot of work. They require a studio. They require a professional. They require uh something that is done in a very certain way that that makes it uh sellable because yeah. you can't just have i i can't just sit here on my snowball sitting with my thing and, and record an audiobook i have a great voice yeah. but uh <laughs> i i probably could do it but i can't do it here i can't do it in my in my house yeah um and so it it requires a lot we do absolutely support it and we're, we're branching out to support it more. And, uh, but I agree with you that audiobooks are a big thing. And in business, they are, I think, something that is very important, um, yeah. which is why we're moving to, to support it on some of our lower packages. We're, we're trying to hack the problem with the, with the initial cost of everything. Um, yeah. yeah, we do do them just at, 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 a, at a high price point. Yeah, yeah I get it. I mean, I just see it for, for me because I, similar to yourself, maybe I would love to speak it myself if mm -hmm. I ever do a book because I just have seen it with podcasters who has, if, if you take Tim Ferriss, if you know him or if yeah, someone I mean, knows him, he's, he's talking his own, he's speaking his own uh, books. And because he's a podcaster, he's used to talking and being able to do this. And for me, it's basically, it links the audience even further to the person because they hear, let's say if it's a 10, 10 hours or eight hours, six hours audiobook, six hours of that same person. It's again, yeah. uh, an enhancing possibility for the authority part. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with that. I think that, I think that especially in business, it connects the author to who is listening even more. Yeah. Uh, but, but again, that, that comes in also the, the, the slippery slope of sometimes the author doesn't want to do the reading. Absolutely. They want to have, they want to have a voice actor that does the reading. Um, sometimes they do want to do it. So, you know, it, it, it becomes, it becomes kind of a service from our position because of service issue of what do you want to do and how do you do it? We would recommend that the author do it, but then the author has to take steps to make it right yeah because we're not going to release something that if he's not going to or he or she isn't going to like no yeah no and it needs to be professional if it's not professional it's not going to work as well absolutely and i know people that are absolutely 100 fantastic professionals in the jobs that they do but they couldn't wait to act their way out of a paper bag yeah. <laughs> true so, yeah <laughs> love it and Andrew, did we miss anything I should have asked you? I don't think we did. I mean, <laughs> that was extremely uh, uh, thorough. I mean, I, I love talking about this stuff. I mean, my, my boss once accused me of being a camera seeking missile, which is <laughs> why I'm doing these things. Um, but no, I mean, I think that that's a really good uh, introduction to things. I mean, if, you're, if your listeners, if it resonates with them, uh, reach out to me. I mean, we're, I'm sure we're going to put some, some links in there and you can find us at leaderspress.com. Yeah. Uh, you can find me at andrew.dupy at leaderspress.com. I'm real easy to find. My name is right in there. There's only two Andrew Dupies in the United States and one of them is an 18 year old basketball star and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> and so, most probably not an author. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's not an author yet. Um, but I, I am friends with him on Facebook, so it all works. 
That's uh, good. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's only two of us, and you know, kind of, kind of we, we have to fight. No, here's my my cat cameo. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, you can you can find me very very easily, and uh, just reach out to me. Even with my new, uh, as, as I'm kind of transitioning into being a business facing person with my business, and rather than customer facing, yeah. uh, I'm still I'm still doing that work. Uh, if you want to, so absolutely reach out to me, and I can talk to you, uh, give you some more in-depth information that's specifically tailored to you rather than the generic that I have done here. And, uh, you know, I, 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 after shilling for all of my authors, you know, we're not afraid of our work. No, <laughs> we're, I, we're very proud I, of what I, we do. Yeah. While doing my research, I've seen the great work and I can tell you I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. But let's talk about that offline. Uh, um, yeah, I, I'm here. <laughs> Andrew, thank you very much for being on the show was a pleasure interviewing you and Absolutely. for everyone listening or watching check out his book don't buy the watch please yes. do that and and hit him up wherever you find him i will put all the links into the show notes so that you can connect to andrew andrew thank you very much thank you so much Jens. it's been a pleasure thanks for listening to today's episode you will find the links and resources in the show notes of this episode if you would like to support the podcast, the most impactful thing you can do is subscribing to the show on any of the podcasting platforms and give me a review. This will help me to reach more innovators around the world and bring some of you into the show. If you have any question to the guest or want to engage with me, feel free to reach out to me on social media and contact me there.